Hello everyone, my name is Pixorus and welcome back to Forever Stranded with the Cobblenauts. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a fantastic day out there. I'm doing pretty well and I have been doing a little bit of research off camera about this mod and I think I've got it pretty much sorted out in my head now. So let me catch you up on some of the stuff that has been going on around here because things are looking a little bit different. Nemson has completed the habitat dome, so we are pretty much secured in here, although there are a couple of exits, one of which is my house, and I will probably end up making this look a little bit better now that it's fully exposed, because evidently there are a couple of gaps in there, you know, health and safety, as we mentioned in the last episode, we want to make sure that everybody is secure in here. Jancy is running around doing stuff with the cobblestone generator, it looks like, and a couple of these bits have been adjusted by my fellow cobblenauts just to make things a little bit easier for most of us. For a start, the cauldron has been moved up here so that all the better than mod stuff is in one place. Secondly, somebody has been using the crucible, and by using a stoked crucible, which needed another bellows, it looks like we can make diamond ingots this way, which means no more explosive jump scares like we had in the last episode, which I'm absolutely fine with. We also have this. I'm pretty sure System Collapse put this together. This is an RF Tools sequencer, and this looks like Morse code or something to you guys right now, but basically this allows it to run a series of commands to a redstone signal. So when this switch is turned on, it basically turns it off for a couple of ticks and then on for one tick and then off for three ticks and then on for one tick and it just loops almost like a musical sequencer if you guys have ever seen anybody use stuff like that i'm not sure quite how else to describe it but it makes perfect sense to me and that when you turn that on it basically runs a redstone signal into this gearbox which powers these two bellows so the gearbox previously i was turning off and on manually with a lever this time it's just being done automatically by this redstone pulsing signal, which is really, really useful. I finally figured out the mystery behind these filtered hoppers and why they keep breaking. Now, previously, in another episode, I actually kind of powered it from below with one of the axles that I think was the, the axle that was holding up this turntable. It turns out that that is not the way you're supposed to do it. Like, if I take this turntable away like this, the hopper looks like it connects to that axle underneath, but like a vanilla hopper, it's actually supposed to push items out of it underneath into some sort of inventory, and it's supposed to be powered from the side by these axles like this. And as you can see now, the gear icon there is filled up, which means it's been powered. And if I throw some ground up netherrack into that right now, which I'm going to in just a second, it's actually going to filter everything without producing a ghast in the air above it, without breaking. Basically, the thing has to be powered in order to work correctly, and it has to be powered in the correct way. And it's not just to get hellfire dust, because that is how we get a component that's going to be very, very important to our progression here, soul urns. For every eight ground netherrack we should throw in, we should be getting a soul urn. The thing is, that's not how it works necessarily, because you actually need to have a fired urn underneath the hopper for it to pop out. So, so it fills up the soul urn with souls from grinding up the netherrack, basically. And so I have to figure out a way of getting this set up. I think I'm probably going to take another set of axles off of here and then do something in the area below here, which means we can place soul urns underneath them. And each time we place a soul urn, it's going to throw eight ground netherrack in there as long as it's powered and it's going to fill up the soul urn. So I'm going to run a couple of axles out of here and they're already turning, which is fantastic. We can probably get rid of this path here. Let me grab a shovel right now. We also have a an RF tools storage terminal now, and this is a, a remote terminal for the main system, which is over there by the storage drawers. System Collapse has been working great guns on getting that sorted out, and it's it's all working fantastically well so far. So big props to him for that. And if you want to see him doing that, then chances are he'll have made an episode about it by now because the guy has been going hell for leather. I seem to be making a lot of progress in the uh, in the bug department lately, <laughs> which I'm fine with. I guess it's, uh, it's all good. Somebody, I think maybe it was uh, Chosen Architect, has installed this sound muffler here as well, which is fantastic because while it's not quite high enough to muffle the sound of the windmill, it muffles the sound of the turntable and the millstones. So you don't have to worry too much about them being really, really noisy. And the one thing that kind of annoys me about these hoppers is that you can't kind of chain them together. So I couldn't put an axle 
coming out there and then have another hopper next to it. We've got to have each of the hoppers connected to its own axle coming off of one of these gearboxes. So I'm actually going to have to reorganize what I thought this area was going to look like just so it can turn around like this. So I'm going to make this area under here out of cobblestone and it's going to be set up so that each time we place an urn underneath the filtered hopper, it sets off a redstone mechanism that's going to drop eight ground netherrack into the hopper from the top and then you'll be able to collect the soul urn once it's filled up. And for that we will need a couple of droppers of which we have seven in here so I'm going to take two of those and I think this should work pretty well. Yeah we want a redstone torch to go here, we want a block on top of that and we want some redstone dust to go on top of that like this. And that should, in theory, produce eight redstone pulses because it's taking advantage of the old kind of redstone torch burnout trick, which should produce eight redstone pulses in a row, in theory. I haven't quite tested this out yet. Valen has been working on some R&D and he gave me this pretty incredible looking pickaxe, <laughs> which uh, is a heroic level Tinker's Construct pickaxe, which has a ton of modifiers on it, but I can't use it yet because the requirements need 11 gathering. And right now, in terms of my levels, I'm only up to seven. I did a ton of mining off camera though, because I really needed some experience and everybody else seems to be correct in their thinking that mining is probably the best way of getting XP. So yeah, we're sticking with that for now, but as it stands, there's not a whole lot around here for me to mine. I've basically been doing a ton of mining out the back of my house, just slowly building up my skills out there and grabbing whatever resources I could, but it's not been a particularly quick process. So I'm a little bit behind in terms of skills. Hopefully I should be able to catch up to everybody else pretty soon. And this is the point at which I need to check once and for all that both of these hoppers are powered because if they aren't, then we're going to get some serious ghast problems around here. But if we pop some netherrack in here, some ground netherrack in there, then hopefully each time we place something in here, it's going to update that redstone torch and it's going to fire eight ground netherrack into this hopper, which should produce eight hellfire, but should also fill up the soul urn that we place underneath it. And now I have a ton of urns in my inventory. I've got some unfired ones, but I also cooked a few off camera. And I think I might have to place some blocks around this. Everything needs to go into the hopper, so let's give this a try. And there we go, fantastic. We've got a semi-automatic soul urn production system and no ghasts have appeared. That's, that's fantastic. That's worked basically exactly how I wanted it to do. This one obviously needs the same barrier that we have set up over here just to make sure that the stuff doesn't end up going in the wrong place. We should probably just surround this entirely, but maybe if we surround it by glass so people can kind of see what's going on here. Either way, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, we're just getting some free hellfire from that, and that one is powered as well, thankfully. So, so now, uh, let me grab that ground netherrack back. So now we just have to pop those down there. And it's producing soul urns for us just by dropping an urn underneath that. Fantastic stuff. All right, I'm going to make this police look a little bit more pretty again because obviously I've taken up a bunch of the grass that I didn't really need to. But now all we need to do is keep popping urns underneath there and we'll be getting plenty of soul urns to be getting on with. The glass enclosures for the filtered hoppers were the perfect excuse to take a look through the extra textures in chisel. Okay, that looks lovely. I like that a lot. All right, we'll go with that then. Uh, I'm just going to place it around here in a kind of bottle shape, I guess. I can't really can't really think of any other way to describe it, really. But just so we have something in place to make sure that none of the drops escape. Uh, we'll put some of these ghostwood leaves. That's another thing I meant to mention is that I figured out a really easy way to make arrows. Because arrows, obviously, you need access to feathers and we don't really have any access to them without a chicken farm of some description, which we don't really have. And raven's feathers are the other things. You need them from Twilight Forest. Uh, skeleton essence you can turn into arrows and you need flaked flint points sometimes, but you can just do it with a regular flint and some ghostwood fletching, which is made using ghostwood sticks and leaves. So all I needed to do was, excuse me, freaking embers, get out of here. <laughs> all I needed to do was farm a little bit of ghostwood and I have myself a bow. <laughs> Thanks for the assist, Nemson, appreciate that. Make sure the windmill is on. That's the most important thing, is to make sure that the windmill is on. We'll get one of our regular urns. We'll pop that under there. And a soul urn pops out. Okay, so we need to make sure that this is 
accessible underneath like so but maybe we'll add a hopper down there to collect it and then it can deposit it in a chest or something like that because yeah that, that would be a, <laughs> a slightly better method than having to walk underneath this the entire time but as with everything in this pack it wasn't about to go that smoothly and just as things looked to be going my way the server restarted and this gearbox broke. Now this is a problem I've seen a couple of people having, particularly Jay who streams under the name Grumpy Brit over on Twitch, and he's the guy who actually designed this whole map in the first place, at least the the aesthetics of it, the shuttle crash site and everything. This world is one that he's put together himself for the mod pack, but he had a go with this the other day and he was having this problem where his windmill gearboxes kept breaking. And that's only supposed to happen if some stormy weather happens and like the wind is getting too high and the windmill starts turning too fast and obviously with this windmill we can't even see how fast it's turning because it's glitched out right but the idea is that anytime a storm happens the windmills kind of get overloaded and it breaks the gearbox that they're attached to now thankfully not all of my gearboxes are broken it's just that one but each time i replace that one it breaks again and these wind chimes, thankfully I had the pieces to put together a wind chime, but these are supposed to exist so that they output a redstone signal when the weather gets up like that, and that stops this from breaking because it uses a redstone signal to turn it off. But unfortunately, because we're in the nether, there's no way of resetting the weather ourselves, and there doesn't even seem to be any weather in the nether. I mean, for a start, we're inside a glass dome, but that's not important, it's about the dimension. And the dimension seems to be playing up a little bit, to the point where it's telling us there is stormy weather, even when there isn't any visible sign of it. And to be honest, we've tried going into the server commands in, in, the, in the console and clearing the weather, which should clear it in the overworld if that's the problem, but evidently it's not, because it's not clearing this problem up. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm at a bit of a loss, to be honest, because the entire progression of what I wanted to do with this video, making the soul urns and stuff, relies on this windmill being able to turn. And it's not right now. So the only thing I can really think of to do is go out and get some more XP by mining and upping some of my skills so that eventually, hopefully, I'll be able to use Valen's pickaxe, among other things. There are definitely some skills that I need to brush up on in the skills menu, so hopefully... I'll be able to do that in the meantime. I'm not sure how much of that is gonna be that interesting for you guys to watch. The nether is a bit of a hostile place and I'm worried that I'm probably gonna die a little bit while I'm out here. So I'm gonna go exploring. I'm gonna go and do a bit of mining if I can find some resources around here that haven't been mined out already. And I'll bring you guys back in if anything interesting happens or alternatively, if the so-called weather clears up and we get to use the windmill again. So I spent more time mining out more of the area behind my house and eventually got the confidence to step outside and take on some mobs, which turned out to be a bad move, as my attempts to keep a blazing juggernaut at a safe distance failed and my attempts to escape went even worse. Of course I decided to switch the camera off for the moment I managed to play fireball tennis with a ghast, but luckily another ghast came along so I could provide the following dramatic reconstruction. And right after I had finally gathered enough experience to use Valen's pickaxe, System Collapse arrived with news of the mob farm that would change everything. So hey, uh, System Collapse has just stopped by. How's it going? Oh, good. How are you doing yourself, sir? Uh, I've been better, to be honest. I <laughs> I had just got this system up and running. And let me, let me briefly explain what this is supposed to do, because you stopped by and you were like, oh, hey, have we got a way of not spawning ghasts every time we filter stuff now? Yeah, exactly. And basically, that's what this is. Every time... It, it's kind of low-tech, really. It's like old-school redstone stuff, and it relies on that burnout mechanic that redstone torches have, where if you put it, like, with a, a torch on the block under there and it's powering that, and it kind of creates that feedback loop that burns out redstone torches. Oh, yeah, with the, with the super fast pulse. Yeah, and it creates eight pulses, which is basically exactly what I need to put eight... Uh, what is it, ground netherrack through the hopper in order to turn it into hellfire dust. Okay. And the the thing about not creating ghasts is that these things have to be powered by an axle from the side, and I was powering it from below before, like I was doing with the millstones and everything, so that's kind of what was causing the, the problem there. So they're just incorrect, like, source of power, right? Okay. So now when we put soul sand in these, all you have to do is stick a an urn underneath there, and the block update of putting the urn there will trigger the redstone thing 
and it will spit out eight pieces of ground netherrack. You get eight hellfire dust, and it fills up with a soul urn. How are you getting a signal off the the urn? Um, it's just like a block update. Like if you just hit that, like you put any block there, it's just like a bud thing. Okay. Only problem is uh, right now <laughs> it's not actually filtering anything uh, because the windmill is off. And I don't know if you can see this, this wind chime over here is like, it's got this tiny little tinkling noise and it's putting out a redstone signal and that's, uh, Nemson put the lamp up there so we can see it kind of better. And okay. there is this thing with windmills where if it detects stormy weather, the gearbox breaks. Ah. And for some reason it's doing that right now. And I don't know why, because obviously there's no weather that we can see in the nether and we have no way of resetting the weather cycle because we can't sleep. So but it's just like uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the mining dimension, but when the weather is stormy in the overworld, yeah, it's also stormy in the mining dimension. Interesting. So, so it's very likely that right now there's a big storm in the overworld that we mm. can't get to. I used this earlier today. Yeah, it was working right up until the server had a like an automatic restart, and then it just broke as soon as I logged in. Maybe it'll fix after next restart. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that's that is definitely my hope because basically my entire progress on this episode has been halted and I just decided to go mining for experience so that I could use this pickaxe Valen gave me and that's uh, where yeah. you come in because you've been working on a mob farm <laughs> and a whole lot of experience yes so while I'm out of action with the better than mod stuff do you mind giving me a tour <laughs> absolutely cool right show show me show me what's going on lead the way yeah it's down here, down behind the uh, Tinker Smeltery. I just built a new area down here last night. Very cool. Yeah, the Tinker Smeltery went up basically overnight as far as I was concerned. I came down here and there was already this massive oven down there. So you're doing pretty <laughs> well. So this is where they, all the... I've, I've been seeing tons of like jittery endermen. Is that like enderference or something that's causing them to stay where they are? There's a item in there called the Ender Tether. Mm-hmm. Uh, what it does is just... Um, when Enderman within a certain range try to teleport, they actually get pulled back to the torch. The that's, Enderman is that called the Ender Torch? Yeah, that's Ender -torch. super cool. That's really yeah, really cool. Yeah, it's awesome because it makes these mar these kind of farms possible. Because otherwise, Endermen are usually a giant pain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like and and yeah. I think we have Quark in this pack as well. So if you try and fight an Enderman, they teleport you to them. So there's no way of like oh. cheesing them or anything. Yeah, they're absolutely brutal. <laughs> uh, down here we got kind of an overflow chest down below here. Uh huh. Yeah. A lot of gold you can swords. See, it's getting backed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Over here is where the experience comes out. Uh huh. You literally standard. just stand there. XP tap. Yeah, Rain nice. Flip. And that looks like it's got a lot of capacity in there. Oh, Dude, there's a. It's drum like levels down at a, below there. It's levels at a time as well. That's crazy. I thought it was just going to be like bits and pieces, like you get from mobs. <laughs> there's tons in there. There's a drum in there with a giant buffer. I think it has about 256,000. Actually, even more than that, I think, because this tank can only, I think, hold about 16 buckets. Right, right. So um, it's just but uh, refilling just it every it time from the buffer into here as it gets used. Uh, but we can't leave it on all the time, so I yeah. need to make some signs. That's why I came to visit you to make signs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. How many signs do you need, though? Because I should have some in overstock. I just need pretty much one more to tell people to keep this chest down here empty. Okay, perfect. Well, I will I will go and but grab you a sign then. We can't leave this uh, running all the time. Mm -hmm. kinda need to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, yeah, I will, I will at least be able to give you a couple of signs to, to get on with because, yeah, I made... I made three of them last time I had the uh, the saw running. This is this is crazy because this will basically fast forward us through the skills track like no problem. Everyone like, can get past leveling if they want to. What what level are you at by the way in some of your your skills right now? I just pumped four of them up to thirty, and I was 30. working on the others. That's crazy. And that literally. It just took a couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is going to be so valuable. Like, yeah, I think you, out of everybody on the server, you've probably been doing the most work in terms of getting us, like, proper Well, I've been looking at what everyone infrastructure. has been doing, right? And uh, I've just been trying to go fill the holes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, just kind of... see that we need. Next, I'm probably going to work on a good power system for us, so... Amazing stuff. Well, thank you so much for uh, letting me know how this works, and I'll, I'll make sure not to leave it on because uh, evidently that is causing a little bit of lag down here. But uh, exactly, it causes a little bit of lag, and this chest it needs to be yeah, kind yeah. Of filtered out because well, I can still add more things because it is auto deleting a whole bunch of the stuff. Mm -hmm. 
uh, but not everything. So I'm trying to keep some of these enchanted armors because later on we're going to be able to pull enchants off them. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. while there's some stuff in here, is it all right if I grab anything? Because I'm a little bit like, I don't have a whole lot oh. of armor going on right now. That, any of the stuff here, anything, just have at her. Amazing stuff. Right, I'm going to grab some leggings. Anyway, I'll probably end up doing the same for myself because actually now that... Um, you got the crucibles. We can actually make diamond armor now. <laughs> as long as the crucibles can be stoked, which needs the windmill. So oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit of a a difficult time. Wait a sec. Why can I not put this? Oh right. I, apparently, I don't have the agility stat I need to put these leggings on. You can so go get it in a couple of seconds with the tap. Yep, already did. There we go. <laughs> Amazing <laughs> stuff. Right. Well, thank you so much for the tour. Really appreciate it. I uh, I'll catch up with you later. Thank you very much for the signs and you have yourself a good day and I hope that storm ends for you. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, folks, after that little meeting with System Collapse, which was pretty awesome, and the mob farm, yeah, <laughs> the, the windmill is looking a bit wibbly wobbly. That's why I'm about to fix it. We, uh, we did a reset of the server and it seems like the day and night cycle has been fixed basically like we, we did a couple of tests behind the scenes and it turned out that for some reason the day cycle wasn't moving on which meant the weather couldn't reset it now has and now we can take off this wind chime and the best part about this is we can apply it to the gearbox up there i think we can hang it from the side of the gearbox once we put a fixed one up there and that will hopefully mean that whatever has just happened to the gearbox to break it isn't going to happen again because anytime the weather reverts to something stormy the wind chime will emit a redstone signal when the weather gets bad and then it will turn off the gearbox so that it doesn't break hopefully then we should be back in business and i can get on with what i wanted to do for the rest of this episode which was finally get us started on the soul forged path it works <laughs> the windmill works again it lives and uh okay how am i going to Okay, this is what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and attach the wind chime to the underside of this redstone lamp. Okay, so then when this emits a redstone signal, it should send it into this block over here, which is the gearbox, and that should hopefully, hopefully mean that the thing depowers. Anyway, it seems like this is ready to re-engage. So now we can get the machines back on the go and I can get back to sorting out my soul urns because you need those and you need a fired crucible. You need a, uh, a stoked crucible for this. So it's, <laughs> it's meant that I, I basically had to halt my entire progress for a little while until we could get this sorted out. But now the, pr the crucible can be stoked. We can make more urns using the kiln. Oh, fantastic. Everything is back in motion. So now if we place an urn underneath here, Yes, okay, we're back in business. Cool, so now I can figure out how we're going to set up the hoppers and the chests underneath here to make the collection of these things a little bit easier. But everything seems to be working exactly as planned. Good, good to know that I haven't broken anything in the meantime. And so the hopper system is now up and running and is pretty much doing what it's supposed to do, except <laughs> where you see the hellfire dust falling through there, that's actually not coming through. That's actually a visual glitch. It's just glitching through the hitbox of the filtered hopper but it isn't actually coming out at the bottom so you still have to pick that up kind of manually and I would put another absorption hopper or something like that over here except for the fact that I don't have another one and I didn't want it to pick up the ground netherrack as it was being dropped into the filtered hoppers so that, that was always going to be a risk so I figured I would leave that out of the equation the only thing I'm worried about collecting in this case is the soul urns anyway so for the most part that is working seamlessly i've got 19 of these things now probably yes 20 okay there we go so that's pretty much what i wanted to do with this setup for the time being i think we can probably get on ahead and figure out what we're going to do with these now the thing we want to be making with these soul urns is soul forged steel which which requires an iron ingot some charcoal or coal dust and a soul urn and it gives us the urn back at the end of the day so fact is we don't have to keep making these urns we can just use the ones we've got but obviously if you want to make a whole bunch of this stuff at once probably best to have as many urns as you care to make so i'm going to grab a little bit of iron out of the storage system here it seems like we have a decent amount so i don't need to worry about quite how much i'm going to take here here. I'll probably take 20 to get started with because then we have 20 soul urns to be getting on with and I wonder if there's any coal dust in the system. In fact I'm gonna grab two stacks of coal and turn it into coal dust because I have a feeling we will need to be making a whole lot more of the uh, the soul forged steel and the crucible has mostly been used for making diamond ingots so far 
but this is where we can start production of our soul forged steel and with that you make a soul forged steel anvil and there it is my very first soul forged steel ingot and definitely not the last at this point because we are going to need to do a heck of a lot more of this the soul steel quest requires a soul forged steel anvil so we need to get a few more of these we get a few ingots for our trouble this is a very very slow process so how about we line these guys up and we see if we can stoke a few of them at a time. In the process of putting together two more hibachis, Valen had yet another surprise for me. <laughs> what the heck? Does ghast meat make you float? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> That's so cool. Dude. I had no idea. It gives you levitation for a couple of seconds. That's That's so neat. Man, I don't know if there's actually any use for that. I also want to know if we can cook any of this. Oh, brilliant. My Hellfire stuff is done. Amazing. Right, well, <laughs> Systems Mob Farm is, for a start, it's ridiculous, but it's very, very easy to overflow. We really need to keep track of this, and we need some kind of void chest fast, because otherwise the sheer amount of items here is just going to overwhelm us. But at last, with the windmill turning merrily and the fires stoked under two more crucibles, I had enough soul-forged steel to complete today's quest. So it's time at last to create ourselves the soul-forged anvil and finally complete this quest. I think that should be the recipe. And we've got it, folks. Soul steel. This is going to be exciting times, and I have... Virtually no idea what is required of this at this point, so this is going to be the first time really checking out this part of the mod. And oh my words, it's a 4x4 crafting grid. You know what? <laughs> I probably should have expected that. At this point in this pack, I probably should have expected it. As an anvil, it looks a little bit more refined than the vanilla anvil. It looks a little taller, you know? It looks like sort of waist height, the right kind of height to be working on some pretty advanced crafting. So I'm going to look into exactly what is required of this. Oh my word. Okay, we got some interesting stuff here. We got a block dispenser, a buddy block, detector blocks, plate armor, helmets, all of this stuff made out of soul forged steel. Got some plate armor on the go. I have no idea what... Th this stuff is tough. This stuff is like diamond level tough. That's very cool. The plate armor, oh, that requires a ton of stuff. We got some leather straps in here. We got some padding, which is made from that tough fabric we were making before, and some feathers, which I guess we should be able to make now. I've seen a couple of chickens walking around, so I think we have the capacity to get feathers at this point. Soulforged steel gears, I imagine, are going to be very useful in making some better gearboxes. You can make iron walls with this thing. There's a steel gearbox. There you go. We've got a refined hacksaw, uh, a steel axle, a uh, steel pressure plate, candle holders. There's <laughs> some interesting stuff here, but this soulforged steel is going to be pretty useful, I imagine. There's an infernal enchanter set up here as well. Now, a lot of this gear doesn't look too out of the ordinary, but I wonder what it's got in terms of durability, because you're making this with <laughs> hafts, which are completely different, apparently, to the... Uh, to the normal sticks that we've been using to craft basically everything else. Interesting. L looks like we'll have a lot of stuff to explore, and maybe in the next episode we will get around to that. But that is probably going to do it for today, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Forever Stranded with myself and the Cobble Noughts. Leave a like on the episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. Don't forget to check out the other Cobble Noughts channels linked in the description, and I will see you guys next time. Bye for now.